three days later. Inside the box, we have the instructions on an SD card, a small roll of black filament, some cable management utilities and the timing belts, standard power cable, all the screws that we'll need, well most, power switch, screwdrivers, wrenches, and the PVC pipe that we'll need for the filament holder. The included power supply, although I ended up using an aftermarket one that has a little bit more power to it to heat the bed and head up faster. The build surface, which is just a large square of masking tape. The heated bed build surface. A bunch of acrylic pieces wrapped in the worst brown paper you'll ever have. These will form the electrical box, the bed, and the filament holder. More acrylic pieces. Cables to connect the motors. A USB cable for serial connection. The LCD screen cable. Inside this bag, we have some 3D printed parts for our 3D printer. We have the Z-axis drive screws, the 2020 aluminum frame, none of which are labeled in length. Some more cables, which are the stops for the various axes, the extruder and whole carriage for that with its filament feed tube. Some metal mounts. These will end up being used to mount the Z-axis motors and some other motors. They honestly just look like shelf mounts that you can buy at any hardware store. We have the filament bit. This is where you feed the filament in. Technical name escapes me right now. We have rollers for the bed to go across the 2020 aluminum profiles. Some more build pieces to connect the 2020 frames along with the rollers that the timing belts loop around. The LCD screen with control buttons and the brain box or the control board whatever you want to call it five motors one for x one for y two for z and one for the filament feed i then laid everything out on the table to make sure that nothing was obviously broken and that everything was there upon inspecting the power supply i noticed that the switch to switch between voltages was rusted but again this didn't matter because this was on the included power supply and i used a aftermarket one with everything then laid out on the table i wanted to make sure that i actually had everything here so if i needed to go buy something i wouldn't be held up by that then once i plugged the micro sd card that contains the instructions and all the other software for the printer into my computer i opened the parts list and everything is in chinese i ended up converting the pdf to english using some google translate website to translate from chinese to english at which point i was able to somewhat get an idea of what i had in front of me I still didn't have a full list of all the screws that were to be included, so if any of these were missing down the line, I wouldn't really know until I needed to use them. Now you wouldn't really think a parts list for screws would be that big of an issue, but we'll get to that a little bit down the line. When I first started building the printer, I was actually pleasantly surprised at how detailed and decent the instructions were for a Chinese product like this, and there's also a video that shows how to assemble the printer that's included on the micro sd card but it's not the same order of build as the pdf and i found the pdf to be a little bit better since it somewhat lists the parts that you're going to need none of the profile beams are labeled for which one is which so i had to use an imperial ruler and then convert to millimeters to figure out which beam is which if you don't own a millimeter measuring device or calipers i would heavily suggest that you buy one before you build this printer if you've built a 3D printer before, I highly doubt this will be an issue for you, but since this was my first build, I had kind of a difficult time figuring out what was what. When I went to mount the Z-axis profile beams, I noticed that I put the corner supports on upside down. You can see here that one side of this hole has bits drilled out where a screw head can fit through. That is actually the side that needs to be on the bottom as the screw will go up through that and into the Z profile beam. There's no indication of this in the instructions at all. 
I should also note that some screws will fall through the holes on these little corner silver mounts. There are washers included, but the guide never tells you to use them. You do want to use washers on these guys here, otherwise the screws will fall right through and they end up not doing anything at all. At step two, you'll see two measurements for 248 millimeters and 127 millimeters. These are complete bullshit. If you measure how it says in the picture, you won't get those measurements. You have to kind of fudge with it to get those exact measurements, which leads me to believe that they're just completely incorrect. I ended up wasting a bunch of time thinking I assembled this wrong when it was correct the entire time. The Z-axis motor mounts I can foresee tilting and shifting just a little bit since they're only anchored down by two screws at the bottom, but there's this entire slot that they can move on. I don't think they're going to work out in the long run. After some confusion on step five for which beam the bed rolls on, in the pictures there's a little hole drilled at each end and the only beam that you should have left with holes drilled on it connects the two Z support beams at the top. After looking around online, these instructions are incorrect in that the beam that you do mount the bed to has no holes on it. At step seven, there are M2 10 millimeter screws, which are these little black screws that you use to mount the stop switches to a piece of acrylic for the bed stop. These only measure eight millimeters and they're not long enough to make it through the stop switch and the acrylic that they mount to. I ended up ordering a set of M2, three and four screws off Amazon and I've used a ton of them throughout this build. I ended up replacing the Z-axis motor mounts with some ones that were 3D printed by my brother. I spoke to some people who have this printer and they said that the Z-axis motors do bind up due to the mount tilting when the Z-axis motor starts moving up and down. It's just easier in the long run to get these put on now instead of building the printer and then switching them out later. When it came time to install the timing belt for the bed, it's supposed to slide in these little curved slots. It's very difficult to actually get the timing belt through those slots. I ended up forcing it through, but it may be easier to get a file and maybe open those up a little bit. If I had power tools, I probably would have opened it up a little bit using those instead. I ended up forcing it through and then just zip tying it on. Once the bed timing belt was installed, I noticed that everything kind of went together much smoother than it did at the beginning. The instructions became easier to follow as most of the frame was built. All of the confusing stuff was out of the way. There was really only one place for each component to go, so there wasn't any confusion on where to install things. I cannot stress how valuable the kit of screws that I ordered was, as some screws were missing. They were just some miscellaneous ones, but in the end, I had extra screws somehow, but not of the ones that I needed. So I did need that set of screws. So if you get this printer, do invest in that set of screws. At first, I thought my aftermarket power supply was too large for the electrical box, so I ended up mounting the stock power supply instead, to which I noticed that there's only three screw holes that fit on the acrylic bottom of the electrical box. 
I also noticed that the acrylic bottom of the electrical box that I have is different from the one in the instructions. I was able to get three holes mounted and the power supply was relatively secure that way, so I just went with it. After the control board was mounted, I realized that I had plenty of room for my aftermarket power supply, assuming I could actually get it mounted inside the electrical box. I was able to do this with two screws total and a bunch of washers to get it fairly secure in there. I don't think it's going anywhere, so I'm happy that I was able to make that fit. The rest of the control box went together very easily. The instructions were pretty good on how to cable everything up. This was my first electrical project that I've ever done and I found it pretty easy. Some of the wires did not have enough of the shield stripped off to plug into the power supply terminals and the terminals on the control board. So I did have to strip those down a little bit more to get them to fit. I ended up doing a bunch of cable management. I've cut that out and just skipped ahead to wiring it up in the control box. One thing that you want to make sure of is that if you do cable manage it, that you raise the X axis bar all the way to the top and then move the motor to the right all the way to make sure that the cables have enough length once they're cable managed to move back and forth. Once all that was done, I was able to wire everything up relatively easily and be on my way. Now that the build was complete, I ended up powering it on and making sure that everything homed and it did. The only glaring issue that I noticed was the left side drive screw for the Z axis would start to lean inwards towards the center of the printer when the carriage was at the bottom Z position. I ended up just remounting it. It turned out that one of my Z axis motor mounts was tilted a little bit. Once I got that in there all the way, everything was fine. Everything homed great and I didn't really have any issues there anymore. I then began attempting to level the bed so I could get somewhat of a decent print. I've never bed leveled before, but that's when I noticed that the bed rocks back and forth an obscene amount that you can't even justify. The simple fix to this was I just took some zip ties and put them very tightly around the wheels that wrap around the profile beam underneath. This ended up working rather well to stop the bed wobble for now. Later on, there are upgrades that you can print to kind of fix the bed wobble yourself, as well as putting the bed on dual rails to completely eliminate any bed wobble you may have. The wobbling bed was pretty much the last issue that I thought I had before I could start printing. So I ended up getting the bed leveled, installing that masking tape build surface on top of the heated bed, and then moving forward with trying to get my first print started. One thing that I ended up doing was I misread the wiring chart and I accidentally switched the thermometer on the head with the fan on the head. If the printer's on, the fan on the head should be spinning at all times. This isn't noted anywhere in the instructions. If you've had a 3D printer before, you'd probably notice this right away. I ended up burning up the thermometer and just replacing it. It was pretty easy to do. I ordered a five pack off Amazon is probably a good thing to have on hand. As it was printing, I noticed that the wires that go to the head were constantly touching the bed. I ended up zip tying those to the feed tube loosely so that way it would end up not catching on the bed ever. So I didn't have to worry about it when I'm not actively monitoring the printer while it's printing. <laughs> 
Since this is actually my first 3D print ever, you can see right here that we just created some spaghetti mess, but I was across the room when it happened, so it built up quite the waste of filament for a while before I was able to catch it and stop it. The print just came unstuck from the bed. After that fiasco, my brother was kind enough to give me some tips before I started printing again. He helped me with some Simplify 3D settings to better slice the model again. This one came off the bed right away. I ended up re-leveling the bed. I found out that my issue was that the bed is too far away from the head. You really have to smoosh that first layer on there and you have to get it a lot closer than you would think. Again, if you've had a 3D printer before, this isn't an issue, but since this was my first printer ever, I really didn't know. After that bed re-level, the first benchy came off without a hitch and it is a pretty good print for a printer with no upgrades. That's honestly a pretty cheap printer. And this is the first Benchy the Boat print that came out of it. There's a few issues towards the top of the cabin and on the smokestack at the top. This is all right though for a printer that has had no upgrades on it aside from those Z-axis mounts. The next print to come off of the printer as suggested by my brother was the Dimension Calibration Cube. This is supposed to just be a 20 millimeter cube to test how accurate the printer is printing dimension wise. After the print was done, I got out my millimeter calipers and at worst, it was only off by one fourth of a millimeter. So this is pretty good and I can start printing upgrades to further improve the quality of the prints. After that was done, I consulted with my brother again. He helped me get some better G code for the next print as the top of the cube did have some under extrusion problems that he was able to resolve by making some changes. Unfortunately, I'm unsure what those changes were, but in time, I'm sure I'll get better at it. Here are some pictures of the first and second calibration cube side by side. So you can see the difference on the top of the cube that kind of fixed that underfill. As someone who's never built a 3D printer before, this was a pretty interesting experience. Would I suggest it to someone who's looking to get into 3D printing? Probably not. It was very frustrating to build due to the inconsistent instructions. I would have almost rather had to pay a price premium for better instructions and maybe some support down the line. I would have been unable to complete this build and get it printing how it is without the help from my brother. If you're willing to stick it out though, you can get this printer for pretty cheap. So it's kind of a trade-off. I feel like I've learned a lot about 3D printers that maybe everything going super smoothly would have not prepared me as much for if something breaks down, down the line. I feel I have a stronger understanding due to the issues that I had to face putting this together. Almost a jump into the deep end and just get your entire body wet instead of just your toes, if that kind of makes sense. A few closing notes that I have about the printer. The hot end heater ended up burning out on me after about 16 hours of printing. It finished a print and then just would not heat up again. I don't know what the deal is there. I ended up testing it. I still get 12 volts to the head, but the heating element just does not work. I've ended up ordering a five pack of those off Amazon. They were only nine bucks. And my understanding is, is that they can just burn out. I guess it's not the end of the world. The last thing that's really weird is if you go to add a fan onto the hot end, the leads are reversed. If you plug the fan in normally where red or positive would be towards the back of the control box, that is incorrect. For some reason, they've gone ahead and used black as positive and red as ground. That's just Chineseium manufacturing, I guess. But after I figured that out, everything is smooth sailing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. There probably won't be too much more 3D printing content out of me, but if you're into Source Engine game design, I hope you stick around. Thanks for watching and happy mapping, or in this case, happy printing.